It's late in the day. But the canoe still lies immobile on the shore. The canoe of the FSM economy remains beached. For 40 years, the islands were receiving aid from the U.S., with expanded levels of aid coming in from the early 1960s on. Then there were 15 years of Compact One funds and two years of supplemental funding. Now we're at the threshold of what the U.S. claims is its final funding period. 20 years of Compact Two. What will it take to get the canoe in the water? In 1965, the Congress of Micronesia, the forerunner of the Congress of FSM, first met. The political development of the territory was well underway in those years, with Micronesians appointed to key administrative positions. Yet there was an acknowledgement of the need for economic growth to parallel political development. These early years were a time of infrastructural buildup. Offices and school buildings or classrooms. The roads go in, the, the airport, we have the, the commercial port. With increased U.S. budgets, the private sector grew in the form of retail stores, restaurants, bars, taxis, pool halls, movie theaters, and later video rental shops. But this brought about escalating imports paralleling the increasing amounts of U.S. aid. When the money comes to our hand, we go out and spend it. I mean, if you look at our uh, import record, we import a lot of beef. And we import lots of food. By the mid-1980s, as the FSM was preparing to enter its compact relationship with the U.S., the islands had a consumption-oriented economy fueled by U.S. aid, but without any significant basis for self-support. The government uh, got used to depending on external assistance. On the part of the general public, people got used to depending on the government. Independence in 1986 ushered in the first compact period with its promise of continuing U.S. aid, but not forever. The aid was to last for 15 years. Its purpose was to launch an economy, getting the canoe off the beach. Built into the compact funding was a requirement that five-year development plans be made with automatic step-downs in funding after each five-year period. The idea was to front load the money coming to FSM uh, in the first years to spur economic development. The first 10 years showed surprising growth. The economy grew by over 4% a year. The private sector expanded rapidly during this time, surpassing government service in the number of jobs that it offered. Of course, the corporatization of some of the former government services, utilities, telecommunications, and public works, helped to tilt the balance away from government administration during these years. There were more jobs. The private sector was uh, growing. This was an era of private business expansion. New taxi services in Pompeii, hotels going up in every state, big new stores like Truck Trading Company and Walmart. 
we see a lot of new businesses that came about because of the compact itself. Franchise stores like True Value, Ace Hardware, that were not here during the Chester days. But the government payroll was also increasing during these years, thanks to the high level of U.S. aid. As many more people piled aboard the canoe, it bumped along the shallows, touching the bottom frequently because of its added weight. Then, after 1996, the situation changed dramatically. Although the first step down in funding in 1991 passed unnoticed, the next one created a severe jolt. The second step down of, of fund uh, to me was a, was a wake up call for, for the country and for our leaders to start to really put things in perspective. The governments had slipped over the first step down by drawing on future compact monies. By the time of the second step down, however, there was nothing further to draw on. It was very difficult. Uh, seeing a lot of people losing their jobs, mainly in government. Reduction of the government payroll was the order of the day in order to whittle down the cost of government while encouraging private sector development. We went through what we call the government reform program. Salaries were frozen, budgets were cut by 10 percent. There was a uh, early retirement scheme that was put in place. This was not only felt in the government, but it was also felt in the private sector because the government is such a big actor in the FSM economy. FSM saw an economic decline of 1% yearly from 1996 on. Businesses are struggling up until now. Businesses are struggling to survive. Some of the economic gains during the early years of this first compact period were lost as a canoe was dragged back to shore again. Meanwhile, Chu suffered through two financial crises during this time due to weak fiscal management. The worst thing you can ever do is have people who don't know anything about economic development handing out money to, to do economic development. The government uh, tried uh, a, a lot of programs. The ice plan, race pigs, sea walls, racing uh, chickens, Opera processing plant. Slaughterhouse. The small boats. Dried fish. Uh, and the crafts. The soap making project. The tuna factory. They bought a persainer. The development didn't take place. What went wrong? Why did the development plans for FSM during the first compact period come up short? We would have. Uh, control the growth of government expenditures and uh, focus on more on private sector development. For a foreigner to come in and start a big business where well, they can invest a lot of money, you have to have the infrastructure in place. The first 15 years of the comeback brought in about one billion for the FSM. It wasn't ready to take that. At the start of the compact, the three target areas envisioned as main supports for the national economy were fishing, tourism, and agriculture. Attempts to establish a local fishing industry resulted in losses of $21 million on top of $56 million in failed investments. A lot of these uh, fishery programs and projects were gonna collapse, fell apart. In 1996, I think that was an era where we had the Asian economic crisis. And when that period hit, um, most of the large operators suffered heavily. Our tax system was not uh, uh, the kind of tax system that would help to uh, induce or promote uh, uh, fisheries development.
Tourism has a long way to go. FSM has fewer than 20,000 visitors a year, one-fourth as many as in Palau, and one-fortieth of the Northern Marianas tourist industry. I think we're at the point right now that we're unable to stand on our own if we're going to depend on our industries, like the tourism, the fisheries. We're not there yet. Agriculture in the islands was never productive to begin with, but it has suffered serious blows in recent years with the commercial failure of pepper on Ponpe and the decline of the copra industry. To be honest, we have our own constraints in terms of developing a self-reliant economy, distance from the world market and lack of our natural resources that can earn us foreign exchanges. Together, the three areas account for only 5% of the total FSM economy. There seems to be very little coming out of all these priority areas. People are selling products, betel nut, reef fish, and sakao abroad but in such small amounts that they don't have a significant impact on the overall national economy. The islands have been accustomed to an increase in jobs no matter what. From 1960 until the start of the first compact, employment in FSM increased by about 2,000 jobs every five years. Only during the late 1990s was there a halt in the job increase. During the later compact period where the low growth was experienced, a lot of people were leaving, therefore there were a lot of migration, out-migration, because there were fewer jobs. The compact was in 1986, right? That's when that flux of people started to arrive Guam. Guam was the major movement, you know, it's just like, boom, here they are. Today, there are more than 20,000 citizens of FSM living outside the country. One of every six Micronesians lives abroad. Uh, in a way, it's kind of a blessing in disguise that a lot of people are leaving and are not leaving off from the, from the resources. Without out migration, I think the islands and the governments would be put in a much more dire situation to provide the basic services. Micronesians today are using their time-tested strategy to balance population and resources. With thousands leaving the islands, the population of FSM has leveled off but resources haven't increased at all. With a compact period coming to an end, the economy is still dependent on government spending. As the tide of government spending ebbs, the boat of private business is beached. It seems to put to sea only when government spending increases. But what if it doesn't? The canoe still sits beached on the shore as the afternoon shadows become longer. The U.S. promises FSM one more funding term, this one for 20 years. Then U.S. aid will cease, we're told. We now have uh, 20 years to go and I, I don't know how successful we will be. I hope it's uh, different between the last 15 and the coming uh, 20 years, I, I hope. The new compact financial agreement offers FSM a funding package from the U.S. of $92 million annually. 76 for annual grant and 16 for trust fund. After three years, the amount for current expenses decreases by $800,000 each year, while the trust fund contribution goes up by the same amount. The trust fund, 
which is a fallback for the FSM after the next 20 years, is expected to grow to 920 million by this time. U.S. federal programs offer additional resources. They currently bring in an additional 15 or 20 million in funding. But FSM eligibility for federal programs is at the discretion of the U.S. Congress. And there are many in Washington who would like to see this reduced, even terminated. What does this mean for FSM? In the first year of the amended compact, there will be a decline in annual compact grants from 84 at the end of compact one to 76 in the administration's proposal to the U.S. Congress. After three years, it will decline to 75.2 million, dropping by another $800,000 each year thereafter. When the trust fund kicks in at the end of the compact funding period, it should be able to generate $55 million each year. That's 20 million less than the FSM will receive in the first year of the compact. What that gradual reduction in the real value of compact grants will mean on government operations is that there will have to be either an increase in the tax effort or a reduction in expenditure in government. If we cannot raise taxes or increase revenue, and we just have to lay people off. Emigration can be expected to continue, perhaps at close to the same level as during the final five years of the Compact One period. If this happens, population growth will be negligible. More and more Micronesians will be looking for their livelihood abroad. Even so, FSM must develop a viable economy, one that does not depend primarily on government spending. There are various possibilities, including market itself as a tourist destination. We've got to put in the resources. Uh, you know, put in the money that we need, the tourism people need to be able to promote uh, and market uh, FSM as a destination more effectively. Commercial fishing, perhaps in close collaboration with Asian boats. The way for us is to really uh, bring in foreign investors use them to develop our fisheries and little by little we take over what uh, the areas that we can do rather than trying to take over the whole you know operation create small niche high-end products whether cultivated pearls canape and pepper or something else we still need to look at the small level exportable commodities. I think we do have some special items uh, which can really uh, penetrate into the international market. Admittedly, this is easier said than done, but the FSM can take some steps towards laying the groundwork for a more productive economy. Create a friendly investment climate so that outsiders invest in the islands. This would entail making land available for leasing, extending the terms of leases, offering court protection for infringement of rights of foreign investors, publicizing laws that govern business, and so on. Even today we still don't have the, the, the necessary conducive environment for in, industries to uh, come in or, or to be started. Control government spending. This means keeping in check the size of the government workforce, 
but it also means increasing the efficiency of the government so it can improve its social services like education and health. If a leader is doing something like uh, you know, improperly using funds, do something about that person. The very least, don't vote them back into office. Increase local sources of revenue, such as income tax and other taxes, and improve its collection of the taxes that are currently levied on the population. In order for a nation to be survived, you got to have a tax base. FSM must pull together in the difficult times ahead. The nation must prepare for a future without the guaranteed U.S. funding that it has enjoyed for nearly 60 years. A viable economy is an urgent need. This is a globalized world. We, we participate in, in the United Nations. You know, we, we, we're engaged in, in this global village. That entails obligation as a nation. We'll have to think small rather than big in the future to be able to go forward. We've always thought big and it never worked. I hope that uh, uh, whatever compact money we will receive will be used wisely and more effectively for uh, projects that will produce uh, results. I am positive in my mind that you know it can be done. That I know. Uh, the bigger issue is whether it's going to be done or not when that 20 years uh, comes to an end, that we're going to be able to be on our own. We cannot sit waiting for the government tide to come in. We must drag the canoe to the sea, where it will float once again. <laughs>